Yo friends, all right, so this is a quick video on the difference between using Grayscale and one of the dithering modes like Jarvis. Um, though I'm using Lightburn, the same thing applies to something like XCS or some other you know, design suite in which you can select different dithering modes um, or Grayscale to laser engrave your image. So this image is by Jeremiah Wagner, who graciously gave it out uh, for everyone free and should be available on laserpix.com. All right, so here's the image itself. It is a very nice image. Um, you can zoom in. You know, it's of really good quality. It's got lots of detail and whatnot. So if I wanted to laser engrave this on, I can do a couple different things. So I'm going to go in. Um, right now, um, it's set up to do grayscale mode. Um, and there's a whole bunch of other you know, dithering properties uh, or dithering algorithms in here that can be used. Um, so we'll look at grayscale. Down here, you can see the sample. Of, you know, here's the actual gray scale itself, um, which again you know, goes from black, goes to white. Um, and up here we have max power minpire. So the maximum power is going to be your black. So whatever a pixel is in terms, you know, if you have an bl absolute black pixel um, in your image, it gets one, the max power. If you have an absolute white pixel in your image, it's going to get the minimum power. And everything else in between, min and max, or you know, black, absolute black and absolute white will get a percentage somewhere between max and min. So that's how it does it. And so if we do a preview, some of the nice features that in here, um, you know, it's kind of drawn it out. Um, so if we just have to say, all right, show me where you're going to put power and do your engraving, it doesn't help us a whole lot. But if I tell it to shade according to power, in other words, show me how much power you're actually going to use and what that result's going to be. We actually see everything detailed out. So in here, you know, wherever the, the if there is ultra white, that's going to get the uh, min power. And where there's, you know, out here, ultra black, that's going to get the max power. So what if we go ahead and we'll say we're going to use Jarvis. So what does Jarvis do? So what Jarvis is going to do is Jarvis is going to use... Um, a bunch of dots to mimic you know absolute black and absolute white um, absolute black is it uses no dots at all um, and in absolute white you know it's going to use a few just to kind of give it a color um, there's a whole bunch of different uh, dithering options you know here's half tone this is how it will do it um, here's you know a sketch kind of does something you know really weird uh, Atkinson um, you know, there's many of these, and you can see them on you know, Imager or other places. Um, but let's see what this looks like in practice. Um, so Jarvis, like I said, it's going to convert um, the grays you know, over the grayscale over to basically a series of dots and dashes. Um, it's going to do it at whatever power you set. We go in. So we do a preview on this. You know, and it looks pretty, pretty black, right? Or white in this case because it's inverted but if we zoom in and we zoom in really 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 closely to see what exactly is happening do you see all the little dots and all the little dashes here um, those are generated by the Jarvis algorithm it's dithering out this image and converting it from a grayscale to you know something else um, you know, to something that kind of mimics grayscale and depending on which algorithm you use um, that has a greater or lesser effect. Um, sometimes it's going to be great. Let's try a half tone. What does that look like? You know, we can go ahead and zoom in here. You can see there's a whole lot of you know a difference. You can tell the difference between say half tone and Jarvis pretty well based on this preview. Um, you can also let's see who else is out here. Newsprint, which is you know something else. Um, if we do a preview here. And again, we can see the, you know, the differences. You can see kind of the grid lines that are coming along. And there's a whole lot of reasons why there's many different dithering patterns. Um, laser engraving just happens to be one of them. Uh, but book print, as well as you know your inkjet printer, are some of the reasons. So, all right, I hope this helped. And if not, uh, shoot me a question. Later.